So I can use that length if I can come back to the original triangle here, right? This is four thirds A, like so. And what that allows me to do is I can actually say, hey, hold on a second, this four thirds A and this six over here, they can combine, so you remember, I've got this length on this side and this length over here, they can combine to be this whole length, but on the bottom side of the rectangle. Do you see that? So if I just highlight that a little bit for you, this length here is the same as this length up here. So I can just do it by addition, right? So this is six plus four thirds A. Okay, now have a look at this. This is brilliant, we are so close, right? If you look closely, I've got a right angle triangle here in the corner. It's the same right angle triangle up there. Six plus four thirds A is one of the shorter lengths. Eight minus A is another shorter length and it just gives you X. Now you might be sorely tempted to say, oh, this is great, I can actually combine these two together, but you're gonna find that uh, it's not enough, right? So let's actually have a look at this, um, this triangle here in, I might just uh, give it a one more color just so that we can, that's not what I meant to do, just so that we can follow this in our working. So let's grab this one like so, and then let's make it, uh, let's make it purple, shall we? Not just the outline, I always do this. Okay, fantastic. All right, so what we're gonna do is, in this right angle triangle, I can say that eight take away a squared, there's one shorter side, and six plus four thirds a squared, there's the other shorter side, is equal to x squared. So that's, that's really great. I've got now a relationship between the a's and the x's, and that's gonna help me solve this, right? I can say, well let's just simplify this out I guess, I'll expand, gives me 64 take away 16a plus a squared, and then I'm also gonna have 36, all right, just be careful here, um, these two are going to be multiplied together and then doubled, so the six times four over three is gonna be eight, because six divided by three is just two, and then I double, so that gives me 16 a, and then finally I've got this term over here being squared. So that gives me, careful with it, uh, 16 over nine a squared. That's all equal to x squared. You can see here, um, I've got a bunch of like terms here that I can just sort of collect together. Um, if I make x squared the subject, looking closely, you've got um, 64 and 36, which gives you 100. The, this is really nice. Um, I've got a take away 16a and a plus 16a, so they just eliminate each other. And then finally, if you combine your a squared terms, hopefully you can see this is gonna be 25 over nine a squared. So this is nice, but like I said before, it's not enough, right? Um, x squared is in terms of a, but what is a? There's gotta be something else that I can do with a, some other relationship in this diagram that can help me solve what a itself is, and then I'll use that to substitute into, let's, I know we're gonna substitute back into this equation, so let's just give it a name. It's called x squared, okay? Or one, rather, equation one. Now, let me pause. This is my favorite part of this problem, right? Because so far we've done similar triangles, we've done Pythagoras, we've done a lot of reasoning and it seems like we're so close, but A seems to be eluding us, right? A, um, it's, we don't know where it was positioned because we know that this is the midpoint, but we don't know what kind of ratio it produces here, right? What is the final piece of the puzzle? I wonder if it is clicking for you. Again, this is just like the start of the question. This is an appropriate point to pause and say, what, what else can I see here that will help me solve um, or evaluate A, solve the question as a whole? Um, I've hopefully given you enough warning before the spoilers come. The, the final piece of the puzzle here, right, is think back to how this question was created. I just love this, it's delightful, right? This question was not just created by drawing like random lines and random triangles and rectangles. It was created by taking a piece of paper and folding it. And remember, we've already used that relationship once before. We saw that when you start with this right angle over here, when you fold it up, it's still a right angle. Um, over here, it's just facing in a different direction, right? This is not the only relationship that's been preserved when you folded this piece of paper. Not only is there a right angle here and a right angle here, look closely. Did you notice that this length over here, which I have marked in as eight minus A, where does it go when you complete the fold? And the answer is, and you'll see this if you actually do the, um, the folding yourself, it becomes this hypotenuse uh, over here of the 
blue triangle in the top left hand corner, right? Can you see that literally this 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 length here, it sort of rotates around and, and swings up so that it can bring this corner into the right spot, right? So these two lengths are equal, but I have uh, the, the same length stated in two different ways. You can see it right here, right? A take away A, looking at it from the side of that rectangle, and then a, the square root of a squared plus 36 using Pythagoras' theorem. So therefore, I can equate these, and this is delightful, right? So I'm doing this in blue, so let's use that. I can say 8 take away a equals the square root of a squared plus 36. What is our reasoning? And I think I'm going to say by folding. It's just delightful. It's not Pythagoras' theorem. It's that I folded these things. So there's congruence going on between these lengths. So now what have I got here? If I square this out, I'm going to get a quadratic in A. Um, but that quadratic in A, the, um, the A's are going to cancel out, which we've seen before. It's going to give me a linear equation in A, and I can solve that. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to square both sides, and that's going to give me on the left-hand side 64 take away 16A plus A squared. On the right hand side, it's just going to get rid of that radical, that square root sign, a squared plus 36. Like I alluded to before, these a squareds are just going to cancel. And so what do I get here? I'm going to get 16a equals uh, 64 take away 36 is 28. So a is 28 on 16. You can see that there is a common factor of 4 on the numerator and the denominator, so I get 7 over 4, and I'm pretty much there, right? All I need to do is to take this value of a and substitute it back into that equation 1 here. So let's just write that, right? Substituting a into 1, what do I get? Well, I'm going to get, uh, let's see here, you can see I've got the x squared on the left hand side, it's 100 plus 25 on 9 times, here comes a squared, so it's 49 on 16 and hilariously <laughs> there are no common factors at all there because all of these are squares and they're squares of prime numbers right so you got five squared here three squared here well oh, that's four squared which is a bit cheeky but that's fine it still doesn't cancel with anything else and that's seven squared so uh, what am I going to get here well this is going to be a hundred plus I've actually already calculated this just to make it a bit easier for us 1225 on 144 um, up the top there that's going to give you 15,625 on 144 and delightfully um, you probably spotted the denominator there is a square number so when you take the square root you're just going to get over 12 but you might not have known that 15,625 is also a square number it's 125. So of course you could write that as a mixed numeral if you like, but I'm just going to leave that there because it's exact. So in conclusion, uh, having a look at all of these different problems um, and just let's just go right back to that first page, right, which shows all the problems all together. There we go. All right. Um, it's delightful to me that it is the same bit of mathematics underneath each of them. Pythagoras' theorem can be applied in so many different contexts. And so, you know, mathematics is not just about learning a formula and then saying, great, I can rinse and repeat this over and over again. It's about like I've said this many times, mathematics is a lens for looking at the world and seeing it more clearly. And if you can see a mathematical reality, like a right angle triangle, in places where maybe it's a little bit obscure, you can just use that mathematical knowledge and understanding to unpack and investigate and perhaps solve the problem if you have eyes to see it. And that I think is one of the, the wonderful powers of mathematics.